Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and happy Thanksgiving. What I'd like to do in this video is look at a compilation of some Black Friday fights and tramplings and just all of the trappings of a good pus and mucus eating lifestyle that uh, I guess this was kind of like how anthropologists used to go into foreign people go to people in Africa or people that they didn't understand and they would sort of look at them as savages and that kind of thing and I'm I won't say that but what I will say is that pus and mucus eating is the foundation of this material mythology or the belief in materialism as if all of these things that are that you're wanting to buy at a bargain that you're willing to risk your life and limb to gain as if they have some inherent real value outside of just one thing. A lot of these things people are fighting over uh, game, Xbox games and videos and basically fighting over the very things that will hypnotize them further into a drunken stupor of mucus and pus eating ignorance. So, as you've seen, a couple of these videos are, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm letting it out a little bit. A little bit more hardcore. Oftentimes, I, I hold back a bit because I want to, you know, I want people to, you know, kind of get, learn, understand these principles, not be repelled, that kind of thing. But it, it, sometimes you just got to, you got to let it out. And basically, I'm sort of sharing with you what I share with my friends or people that are interested in the diet I will reveal this type of thing to them you know or kind of whether it be uh, slaughterhouse videos or this kind of thing for me it's a part it's actually a part of the learning process it's a part of the uh, the unconditioning we have to deconstruct and, and uncondition and recondition ourselves into understanding something that's more rational something that is based on a mucus free lifestyle. So when I look at this, I just observe, I, I first affirm that I'm a mucus addict. I'm trying to get off of my mucus addiction, but I'm looking at what my, my mucus addiction used to do, the kinds of, uh, kinds of environments that mucus eating fosters. And again, I, put that down on anything take pus and mucus out of the equation all these people that you'll see in this videos the one thing that they all have in common they are all pus and mucus eaters you're not going to see a fruit eater or a, mu or a mucusless person putting themselves in this type of environment to do this kind of thing at least i've never seen it maybe i could be proven wrong somebody that's practiced a diet for 30 years you know, there's only a few of them that I know of. So if Brother Air calls me up and says that he wanted to go buy something and, and was in in one of these situations, then I will have to retract my statement. But as far as I can tell, you know, you're not stimulated to put yourself in these kind of environments when you're uh, into the mucus diet. Definitely if you're fasting or you're mucusless or whatever, this is – there's nothing – that you could buy that's that important that you could you know they don't have concord grapes on sale like free because i'm trying i was trying to think of things that would actually get me to want to show up to an environment like this for, you know for some kind of price and, and it would definitely wouldn't i wouldn't be buying it it would be something that they'd be giving away and i still still wouldn't probably do it if they were giving away pallets of concord grapes and organic table black table grapes that'd be that's the only thing i could think of where i would actually consider maybe going down and like okay i want that but i don't know so this is totally insane so let's let's have a little fun and watch some of the the, the debauchery that is post thanks killing uh, it's almost like after you've eaten all this mess on things killing, you have to get it out of your system. So what better way to get it out of your system than to go riot?
they was fighting over food or something. And starving people. there so this 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 is one of the more mild ones started off kind of mild uh we haven't seen people getting bloodied up yet and trampled and and if people die and it blows my mind that we can almost expect it we can expect that on good friday on yeah good black friday what uh <laughs> they're gonna uh, somebody's gonna die somebody's gonna be trampled because they haven't put any kind of mechanisms in place to really prevent that from happening. It's just, at this point, it's just accepted. It's collateral damage because greed and the wanting to take advantage, of, you know, capitalism, take advantage of people's money, their, you know, just, just the whole materialism mythology as being the foundation, as being the, the, the true god of, of a lot of pus and mucus eating people. Um, that is what's important. So, collateral damage if some pregnant woman gets trampled, or some kids get kicked, or police need to, you know, crack a few heads. It's, it's, all, it's all fun. It's all well and good. It's all part of the American dream. You know, uh, it's sickening to me. And people wonder why I have such a strong conviction about this, you know, about these topics, about mucus's diet, about health, about wanting to live a life that's diametrically opposed to everything that this stands for. Yes, I come from this, but yes, I can overcome this. I can rise above this. Just because you're born into something doesn't mean that you have to stay there. That's not, to me, what life is about. Life is about elevation, not getting sucked down into this thing, not just because you're born in a certain society or a certain situation that you can't make changes that fundamentally affect the fabric of the universe because when you if you want to change the world then the first place you can start is change what you eat you can't change what other people eat but you can change with you what you eat and you know, I've practiced music this diet for 11 years and I try I could probably do the math of how many cows have lived because I stopped eating meat you know, how many uh, chickens have been able to live and then somebody's well if you don't eat them somebody else will eat them that's no i didn't eat them so there's some of them that did not get eaten and there's a lot of other people that are stopped that are not eating as much of the mess and those animals are able to survive and one day we need to return back to where we are we don't most of us don't eat our cats and our dogs uh and we live with them. So why can't we live? We live with our cows. Why can't we live with? I, there's a lot of cute pigs. I love pigs. <laughs> They're cute. I want to live with them. I don't want to eat them. And so let's see. What else do we got? So 
sort of about that. This, to me, one of the reasons why this kind of analysis is important is because too often when we use the word riot, the first thing people associate with the word riot is black people in the 60s and the 70s, which really weren't riots at all. They, they were uprisings. A uh, if you would get into definitions, the definition of an uprising would be uh, something that has a political basis. There was a political reason for why people were, uh, you know, destroying some of their, in some cases, their own property and all, all that kind of stuff. But this kind of thing to me is more of a riot where there's no political basis for this, unless I guess you could argue the politics involved in in Black Friday is the politics of each individual to get their hands on as much stuff that is not really that cheap. It's not that, I mean, you could, there's ways that you could get a lot of this stuff just as cheap, but those aren't the conventional methods of, get, of going about getting this stuff. But for my analysis, in my eyes, I'm looking at this stuff as riot. The holiday shopping season got off to a violent start. A temporary Walmart worker was trampled to death by shoppers eager for post-Thanksgiving bargain. I mean, this should not be normal to us, like hearing that. Somebody was trampled to death, all because thousands of people wanted to get together, act a fool, and run in and get a bunch of, a bunch of material goods that, that they don't need. Somebody's life was lost. We can't let that get normal. We can't not feel sick to our stomach when we see that or hear that or we're in the same proximity as that. This is not the world that I want to live in. But what am I going to do about it? If do you want to live here? See, we got to cohabitate with this. And that's why we have to be so knowledgeable, be so strong in our convictions because we're we're in the same environment as this total irrationality total insanity that's built upon pus and mucus eating about 2,000 people waited outside this New York Walmart before it opened early on Black Friday witnesses said once the doors opened the impatient crowd knocked the worker down and then some shoppers stepped over him and streamed into the store on Long Island Dozens of store employees tried to help the man, but it was too late. At least four other people, including a woman who was eight months pregnant, were treated for minor injuries. The store was closed for several hours after the incident. Investigators said they were reviewing surveillance videos, and some said criminal charges are possible in the case. That's another silly thing. So, people getting trampled, people dying. You know, that's we can watch that. That's okay. But don't say a naughty word. Don't say a word that, that we've been socially conditioned to believe is is nasty and dirty. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and happy Thanksgiving. What I'd like to do in this video is look at a compilation of some Black Friday fights and tramplings and just all of the trappings of a good pus and mucus eating lifestyle 
that uh, I guess this was kind of like how anthropologists used to go into foreign people go to people in Africa or people that they didn't understand and mouth open just still blows my mind. The point that I sort of didn't finish because I got off on talking about uprisings versus riots is oftentimes we don't see the white bread America, the suburban America. We don't put them in that same light that we might put uh, people that are struggling for civil rights or, or people that are slanging dope on the street, you know, in a impoverished community or something we don't equate that that for some reason that looks different when somebody in the suburbs or somebody has some money when they snort some cocaine or they do some crystal meth for some reason that's looked at differently than when a crackhead does it in a impoverished uh place or a homeless person or something like that and that's all looked at differently than this madness so uh it's it's And the thing is, see, some people actually look forward to this. They enjoy it. It's like once a year, this is part of their, it's becoming part of their ritual where it's, be, it's, it's like, like going to a football game or something, but they get to participate in the football game. They get to you know run around and smile. And some of the people that get interviewed after these tramplings, they're laughing and happy and jovial. And... Uh, you know, if, if all the, the, the politicians, all these people want to want to criticize and talk mess about rap music or historically all kinds of forms of music have been considered to be, you know, music of the devil's music and all this kind of stuff. And they try to do legislation to hamper the arts, uh, then I can stand up and I can talk mess about this because this is this is actually like so what were all these people listening to were i i I guess all of these folks were listening to to music that was talking about rioting on black friday how many tracks and is there some elton john songs i don't know about that these folks might be listening to uh is there some tito puente songs maybe snoop has a song where he's talking about you know black friday (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we got, you know, is Tupac got a track, you know, you know, where he's talking about you got to trample, you got to trample them good, and you got to get them before they get you. And I mean, it's, oh, man. Well, all right, if, turn away if you don't want to see something that's a little disturbing. Turn away, but you know, then then there's the police. Then that's another layer of insanity that you add to this. Where had their participation? Are you sure that was necessary for shoplifting? I know, right? Hey, get that. Look, get that shit. Get that shit. Get that shit. You done knocked them up. I mean, whatever this guy did, they they said he was shoplifting. And however he ended up in that condition, it is the definition of brutality of, I mean, I, I... no, I didn't see it, but I don't have to see it. <laughs> to is, is that happens every day, all the time. It's just not always caught on tape. But it is the definition of injustice. And in order to see this whole thing is a cycle and it's a, a, a downward spiral. Because you have, on one hand, you have a police state that's ready and willing to keep everybody in check. But as, as long as all the 
uh, as long as you had, keep all the rats in the cage, they don't have nothing to worry about. They know where you're at. You know, sheeple 101, sheeple conditioning 101. Keep everybody together. Keep everybody, if ever, they know everybody's coming to Walmart or, uh, you know, the, all the, the targets and, and all that stuff. They know where people are going to be at. So they have the cops there, let people get crazy, and then go in there and, and bust people up to let, so that people know who has the real authority. It's like, yeah, you can run them up. You can even run over some people. You can kill some folks if you want. But we're going to let you know. That at the end of the day, we're the ones that's running this. And so it's, it's bad news. And we could, we could watch these all day. There's a ton of these. There's just, you could do a search for Black Friday fights or, or anything, and you're going to see thousands. So these aren't isolated incidents. And it is a... Uh, you know, real problem. So now to lighten up, everybody take a deep breath in. Breathe out. <sighs> Concentrate on the grapes. Back to nature. We've got went into the recesses of mucusdom, and now we're coming out. And when we come out, we will wake up refreshed. Be inspired to fast. That's why I show some of this because it really inspires me to kick up my game. When I see how bad things are, I get real serious. And it makes me want to, uh, first, if there was any bit of consciousness that was thinking that there was anything rational about the pus and mucus world, that reminds me how insane it is. And it keeps me on my path. Because every once in a while, you, your consciousness can falter. You know, it can deviate. And so you have to stay steadfast. And sometimes opening yourself up to the realities, for me at least, it, maintain, it can inspire me. Now, some people, depending on where your level of consciousness is, it could depress you or pull you down. So if you know you're that type of person, then you got to put yourself in the right environment not not open yourself up to all that while you're in, you know there's definitely been modes where i've been fasting or mucusless or whatever where i wasn't opening myself up to all all of these things but even even with that with my personality and who i am i've always been conscious and open to the real real reality you know, not the fake stuff, not what they taught me at school, but I, I wanted to seek out how things really were. So that meant that I had to open myself up to some of the nastiest aspects of this world. Not a lot of people want to do that. Not a lot of people ready for that. So that's on you. It, de that's, it depends on your path. For me, what I found is without opening myself up to the reality, there's very little you know there, there's there's you can be you're limited in the amount of spiritual healing that you can actually have because this is whether we like it or not this is a part of our karma this is a part of our reality and you're either going in the other direction or you're still participating you're still in, even if you're indirectly participating so to try and build up my own good karma i make sure that i have nothing to do with the madness and do everything in my power to uh, stay steadfast in my uh, in my desire to become totally mucusless and to overcome this insanity as brother air says to put this entire history this entire chapter this entire society in the dustbin of history it's time to build a new era it's time to overcome this intensive ignorance and get into a mucus free reality so i want to thank you for hanging in there with me and <laughs> happy thanksgiving <laughs> peace love and breath